All right, guys. So now we're going to talk about partial fractions and long division. So before then, we would normally have an integral where we have a rational function like the one you see up here. And normally we would use a system called u substitution, right? But now we need a new approach to integrate rational expressions. And to be precise, the, not, the ones we're talking about is what is called the improper rational expression. So those are when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, that we're going to use long division, or we're also going to use this method called partial fractions, all right, to break them apart to be able to even integrate them. All right, so again, as we move forward in this class, the hardest part is to figure out what method should I use to integrate the function. All right, so again, you're going to at least attempt to use partial fractions or long divisions when you're dealing with an improper rational expression. And that means when the denominator, the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. All right, so let's go on and show you how this works. And uh, I'll explain what they mean by this note over here um, because partial fractions can get more complicated than, than what I'm showing you, okay? But for calculus BC, they won't. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to factor out the denominator. So at this point, I'm not trying to integrate. I'm just going to try to simplify this to some kind of equation that I can actually integrate uh, without being too complicated. All right, so first I, uh, I factor the denominator, excuse me, and then now, all right, we say that this right here can be probably broken down into two separate fractions, all right, where the numerator at the moment is unknown. All right, so we're going to basically try to solve for A and B. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, multiply both sides by the denominator of the left side to be precise, all right? So we're gonna multiply both the left and the right by this. Essentially what I am doing also could be considered the same thing as I'm looking for the common denominator on all of this. So I'm gonna multiply the left and the right side by this, all right? So now what are we gonna end up with on this side, so we're going to end up with 1, and on this side, think about it. If I multiply those 2 times this alone, the x plus 2s are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with an x minus 2. Right? And similarly with b, if I multiply those 2 factors times this fraction right here, the x minus 2s are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left over just with an x plus 2. All right, so what we're going to do now, what we're really doing is we're going to think, okay, what number could cancel, right? What number could cancel uh, the one of these, uh, what, could, what number should I pick for X that would cancel either the A or the B? So for example, what I'm saying is if I pick X to be 2, all right, or you can just simply look at this and as if you were solving for zero. So set that equal to zero and set that equal to zero separately and solve, right? So if I set x minus two equal to zero and solve, I would get x is equal to two. And if I were to plug in x is equal to two into this equation right here, into that equation right there, I would end up with something like one is equal to a, two minus two, plus b, and that would be 2 plus 2. And notice that that would be 0 times 4, so that would go away, and I would end up with 1 is equal to 4b, so b is equal to 1 fourth, correct? Now, similarly, if I solve this right here for 0, all right, I would get x is equal to negative 2, and just in the same process, I would have 1 is equal to a negative 2 minus 2 plus b negative 2 plus 2, which is going to make that go to 0. And I'm going to end up with 1 is equal to negative 4a. So a is going to be equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so what I have done, therefore, okay, and I'm going to write that over here because I'm going to run in a room. 
is I can then rewrite this integral, the original integral. I can rewrite that as negative one fourth over x plus two plus positive one fourth over x minus two. And I can in, then integrate that. All right. Now, by this point, hopefully, and you may not be able to, but you should be able to notice that the answer is going to be natural logs. Now, I don't want to just go into this, but at some point, I'm going to stop telling you that. And I'm just going to tell you that this is the answer to this is going to be a couple of natural logs here. But what I'm getting that from is essentially, I'm just leaving the one fourth out of it and I'm integrating one over x plus two. And once I get to that, and notice, by the way, that this is a linear factor, and that's what they're saying in this note, that the denominators, and calculus we see the denominators are going to be non-repeating linear factors, right? So basically, you're not going to have like an x plus 2 and x plus 2, and you will not have like an x squared, and then you're going to have another factor that's x, like x squared plus 2 and x cubed plus 3 if you factor it. You must have linear factors. So at least for this class, BC in particular, you must get linear factors, non-repeating linear factors, all right? So anyway, for this, I would use u substitution, where the derivative would be just dx, right? So that would be negative one-fourth, one over u du, which is equal to negative one-fourth natural log of u plus c. Now, the u in this case, I would then replace with x plus 2. So this is where I'm getting this answer from. Therefore, this bar right here is going to be 1 fourth times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2, which I didn't write over here, plus 1 fourth times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2. So this one right here, you can do that one using the same methods of, of, of use substitution. However, hopefully at some point, you're going to be able to recognize that if the denominator is one single linear function, more than likely the antiderivative of that is going to be some sort of natural log, all right? Assuming you just have a constant on the top, all right? Um, all right, so let's go to example number two. It's going to be the same method. Again, notice that the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, okay? So we're going to try to break this down. So same thing, I'm trying to teach you partial fractions. Really, the, the hard part here is the algebra, which is the partial fractions. So again, we want to break this down into two separate fractions. Excuse me. Technology, Goulet. So first, uh, try to factor, and that's probably what I should have done first, so excuse me. I should probably factor this first, and that should be the easy part for all of you, including you, Brock. Brock can do it, everybody, anybody can. All right. So we want to break this down into two different fractions where each fraction has one of the factors of the denominator. I don't really know why I wrote that in parentheses. All right. So now again, if I were to multiply both sides times the denominator of this left side, I would end up with x minus 11. I would end up with x minus 2, or a times x minus 2. I would end up with b, x minus 5. And then now, just like before, I'm going to set uh, the first one equal to 0, the first uh, factor, if you will. So I'm going to have x is equal to 2. So if x were equal to 2, okay, I would end up with 2 minus 11 is equal to, notice that the where the a term would cancel, or at the b, I would have 
b times 2 minus 5. All right, so this is going to be negative 9, negative 3b. So b is equal to positive 3. All right. Now, similarly on the other side, if I set that equal to 0, so I have x is equal to 5 there. So if x were 5, and that would give me 5 minus 11 is equal to a, 5 minus 2. And then b would be my minus 5, which is my, my 5 minus 5, which would cancel out. And then that's all I would have. So now I would have negative 6 is equal to 3a. So a would be equal to negative 2. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to rewrite that integral. So I have the integral of negative 2 x minus 5 plus positive 3 x minus 2 dx. So the integral for that, again, using u substitution, right? Notice that this term right here, I want to I want to make sure you know that that's I know that's going to be a natural log because the degree of that denominator is one. All right. So and on the numerator on this fraction, I just have a constant. All right. So the antiderivative of that should be negative two natural log of the absolute value of x minus five. plus 3 times the natural log of x minus 2 plus c. Okay. Now be aware that they could rewrite that if they wanted to, right? They could bring this up as a power, and then that negative would make that go to the bottom of the fraction. So using the, logs, the, the rules of logarithms, I could rewrite that like this if I wanted to. Now, if it was a free response, then obviously I would take the answer above. But I just want to make you aware that if you have multiple choice, they might use the rules of logarithms to change what the answer looks like. All right. So let's go to example three and four. Same idea, right? We're going to do it again. I would encourage you, as a matter of fact, to maybe you can pause it as I'm doing it, but I want you to for yourself to attempt to do it, all right? That's very important. Okay, so if you think you understand it, try to do it on your own, and then you can, after the, you do it, press play to see where I'm going. All right, so again, I want to break this down. I want to rewrite the denominator into its factors, into its linear factors, as a matter of fact. So I have a over x plus b x plus 3. Okay. So now uh, what we're going to do is multiply both sides to the denominator of this left side. So I would end up with 3x plus 6 is equal to a x plus 3. And... bx on this other side. Okay. So now remember that what I'm going to do here is the terms that are attached to the letters to a and b particularly, all right, I'm going to set that this right here equal to zero and solve. So I would have x is equal to negative three. All right. So what would happen with that, right, is that the b, excuse me, the a term will cancel. Now would end up with b is equal to, well, you can do it however you want to. If you want to do it one step at a time, please do it one step at a time. I'm going to just do something that might may bother you, but essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just going to plug in the negative 3, and I'm going to kind of divide it out, which I think you're able to do that. But if this is kind of confusing, please just, just do it the good old-fashioned way, like I've been showing you for the past two examples. Okay, so this would be... Negative 9 plus 6, uh, which is negative 3 over negative 3. So that's going to give you a positive 1. All right. 
Now, if I do the same thing, if I plug in, if I set that x is equal to zero, all right, then b is going to cancel, and I'm going to end up with a is equal to three times zero plus six over zero plus three, all right? So essentially, I'm just skipping one little step, but I'm just doing it a little bit quicker. But please, all I'm doing is plugging in those values, all right? I'm just plugging in those values back into this, and I promise you it will work out the same as what I did in the previous two examples. All right, so it's going to be equal to two. All right, so after that, honestly, that's the hard part. We're going to go back and just plug all this in. So this, we're going to rewrite that original integral that I had, and I'm going to rewrite it as 2 over x plus 1 over x plus 3 dx. And we're going to integrate that. Now this right here, remember, use in substitution if you want to use it. That will be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 3. So this is the only calculus part so far plus c, okay? Now be aware that they could rewrite that by bringing the two up as a power. They could rewrite it as natural log of x squared times the absolute value of x plus three. Now notice that I did not write the absolute value in the x squared, and the reason is is because no matter what the number will be, if I square it, I will always get a positive. So the square kind of takes care of the absolute value. Uh, okay, so again, be aware of that. All right, let's do one more example here, example number four. I'm going to go a little bit quicker if I can. I might not be able to. I'm not that talented. All right, so try not to write too big because on this one, we're actually going to have three linear factors in the denominator, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 12x plus 12. And if I uh, factor the, new, the denominator, excuse me, I would have x, x plus 2, x minus 2. Now remember, all you have to factor the denominator into its linear factors, all right? If the factors are not linear, that is, you can't really, or well, as far as you know, in BC, that's going to work out. And if it doesn't work out like that, either you did something wrong or you must try a different method. So in this one, we actually have to write three different, um, three different fractions because we have three different factors. So again, please try not to write too big on this next part. I want to make sure you have enough room. So again, we're going to multiply both sides times the denominator of the left side, and that would leave me with x squared plus 12x plus 12 is equal to, remember, if I multiply that a over x times x times x plus 2 times x minus 2, the x's would cancel. I would end up with a times x plus 2, x minus 2. Similarly, if I multiply b over x plus 2 times the denominator of the left side, the x plus 2 would cancel, and that would leave me with x times x minus 2. And again, similarly on c, over x minus 2, if I multiply that term times the denominator of the left side, the x minus 2s would cancel. And I would end up with x and x plus 2. Okay. So now uh, I would say take it slow, take it easy. Figure out one factor at a time. We don't have to do all three at the same time, but we know that one of the factors would be zero, all right? So we can start off with that because that seems to be easy. Say so if I plug in a zero, all right, I'm going to write a few things that I'm probably going to delete. So please don't just don't write what I'm writing right now, please. Uh, if I plug in a zero, all right, that's going to cancel and this is going to cancel. So I'm going to end up with just this equal to that, all right, which I can rewrite. So that would leave me, and you can plug. You can go ahead and plug in the zeros. I don't care if you plug in zero. You had to have zero. Well, excuse me. I don't want to write in red here. That would be um, that would be zero. 
squared plus 12 times 0 plus 12 is equal to a 0 plus 2, 0 minus 2. So therefore, a would be equal to 12 over negative 4, which is negative 3. Okay. Now let's do that one more time. If I pick x to be equal to negative 2, for example, then x is equal to negative 2. And again, please don't write this next part out. I'm just trying to make it easier on you. All right. x minus 2 would actually cancel this and this. So it would end up just with the b term. bx, x minus 2 is equal to the left side. All right. So just be aware. All right. So that's going to leave me with, uh, let's see. Negative 2 squared plus 12 times negative 2 plus 12 is equal to b times negative 2, oops, times negative 2 minus 2. That's a crazy looking number. All right, so when we put, put that in, let's see, that's going to give me 4. 16 minus 24, which is negative, negative 8. And this right here is going to leave me with negative 4 times negative 2, which is going to leave me a positive 8, or 8b, if you will. So b is going to be equal to 1, or negative 1. All right, and then finally, if x is equal to 2, if x were equal to 2, again, please don't write this next part, that would actually, if I, were, if I were to plug in that 2, that would get rid of this and this. I would just, I would be left just with a C term. Okay. So that would leave me with 2 squared plus 12 times 2 plus 12 is equal to c, excuse me, I almost wrote a b there, times 2, 2 plus 2, so that's going to leave me with 40 is equal to 8c, so c is equal to 5, all right? So that was the hard part. Now we have to integrate all of this stuff that I just came up with. Uh, let's see, so I have negative 3 over x plus negative 1 over x plus 2. And remember, all I'm doing is I'm just substituting that in, all right? So plus 5 over x minus 2, and then now I'm going to integrate all of that, okay? So when I integrate this, remember if the denominator is a linear function and the numerator is just a constant, this is going to be, a, the, the integral is going to be a natural log. Now, if you don't believe me, you should at this point know how to do the u substitution, so please do it. Don't just take my word for it. I don't know a lot of you just said, I'll take your word for it. Well, that's fine, but I might be lying to you. For all I know, I'm doing all this wrong. All right. So that would be the integral. All right. Now, again, please be aware they could rewrite that. They can all they can bring those numbers that are in front of the. They cannot bring the sign, but they can they can bring the number in front, or excuse me, up as a power by the rules of logarithms. All right. And remember, if it's negative, you put it at the bottom of a fraction. If it's positive, well, you multiply. So I'm going straight from left to right. All right, so the first two terms would be on the bottom. So this would be x cubed. And again, I do have to write the absolute value on this because I'm racing to the power of 3. Okay. Times... 
x plus 2, because remember that also went to the bottom. And then this right here, the x, this part right here would actually end up on top. x minus 2, absolute value. All of that, the ridiculous answer is right there. All right, so again, I'm just rewriting the answer in that way in case they, uh, on a multiple choice question, they'll change it up on you, All right? So let's go to example number five, right? So in example number five, uh, sometimes we need to integrate an improper rational expression, remember, with a higher degree and the numerator or the same degree uh, in both the numerator and the denominator, right? So what that means is that sometimes, for example, you could try to break this down, but this is, if you notice, this is already a linear, uh, a linear function, so there's really not much you can do with a uh, partial fraction. So what you can do instead, and that's what I would probably think about first, to be honest, is I would try to think of dividing, right? Now you can use long division or you can use synthetic division. Remember, synthetic division, you're gonna use the opposite of this number. It's almost like you're setting that function equal to zero. And then you're gonna write the coefficients. You're gonna write the coefficients in order up here and you're going to drag the first number down and then you're going to multiply negative 4 times 3 which is negative 12 then you're going to add those two and you get negative 4 and again you're going to multiply negative 4 times negative 4 which is positive 16 add them up and then negative 4 times 6 which is negative 24 so the remainder is negative 9 so I'm going to rewrite that uh, right there as 3x squared minus 4x plus 6 minus a remainder of negative 9. Well, let me write it like this. doesn't really matter, but I want to write plus a negative 9 over... I just want to avoid uh, simple mistakes that could happen. And then I'm going to integrate that, right? This few parts should be easy for you. And then this last part is going to be a natural log. All right. So that's that for that one. Let's go to the next one now. Now, example six, I, I would avoid using uh, synthetic division when I have something, uh, what do you call it, when the leading coefficient is something other than one, uh, mainly because uh, that makes it more difficult. So I'm, instead of using synthetic, I'm going to use long division. So let me just remind you, right? You can only use synthetic division if the, the denominator of that function is a linear function. So again, basically this right here needs to be a linear a degree one function. If it's not a degree one, you cannot use a synthetic, but long division works all the time, all right? So it's not the only way to do it. I could have pulled out a two out of the bottom one and pulled it all the way out of the out of the integral. But all right. So the way to do this, if you don't remember, is I'm asking you, two x times what number gives me just x? And in this case, one half. Notice that I don't care about the negative five or the negative two. All I care about is those two leading uh, leading coefficients of those functions, right? Or those two leading terms of those functions. So again, 2x times what gives me x? Now, the answer is going to be 1 half because 2x times a half is x, and then 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. And then I'm going to subtract all of that. The x's cancel. The negative 1 will become a positive 1, and my remainder is going to be negative 4. Okay? So my integral now is going to be uh, 1 half minus... 4 over 2x minus 2. Now, like I said, you could have done this to begin with, and maybe we could avoid this part right here, but I could factor a 2 out of the denominator on that one. So before I take the integral of that, because that's going to cost me problems for the uh, for the inter for the integral because of the absolute value, that 2 really messes everything up. So it's not impossible. It just makes it a little more difficult. So when I factor out a 2 out of the denominator, and I'm going to reduce this into that. 
okay? So now the integral of this would be 1 half x minus 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. And that's the answer for that. Okay. Let's go to the next one again. Um, uh, I'm going to use synthetic division on this one. You could use long division also on this one. It doesn't matter. Remember, long division works all the time. Synthetic division only works with linear, when the divisor is um, a linear function. So, 1, remember I want to use the opposite of that number. And I'm going to write the leading coefficients, and I'm going to write zeros for every, every term that's not on there. For example, I don't have an x squared here, and I don't have a constant. So I have to write a zero for that. So this is the x cubed. This is the x cubed. This is the x squared. This is the x. And I have to write a zero for the constant that happens not to be there. All right. So I have to write that. And they're just placeholders. Do you have to write those? The answer is yes. Otherwise, uh, you're going to mess things up because you're going to lose your place. All right, so this has a remainder of 2, so I'm going to rewrite that integral instead as, remember, we're going to use 1 degree less. So if the, the thing I'm dividing is x cubed, I'm going to start with 1 degree less, which is x squared plus x plus 2 plus the remainder. All right. And I'm going to integrate that, which this is actually not that bad. Two times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus one, dx. All right, that's that for that, guys. Let's go ahead and go to example number eight. This one, I have no choice. I have to. Um, ooh, yeah, that would be terrible. <laughs> I was thinking about how bad that would be to do with partial partial fractions, but let's use let's use uh, long division, okay? Again, the reason I, I kind of stop and just kind of look at it first is because at some point, they're not going to really tell you, and I'm not going to tell you the test. We're not really going to tell you what method to use. So eventually, the hardest part, even if you can do every method, the hardest part is to choose the correct method, or I shouldn't say the correct method, but the best method to obtain an answer as fast as possible with a whole ton of complications. All right, so that's normally the hardest part. All right, so again x squared times what gives you 2x cubed. In this case, I have to multiply that times 2x. So now we're going to multiply 2x times x squared, which gives you 2x cubed, 2x. And by the way, this have to match what I just wrote. If they don't match, that means you wrote the, you got to try again. You're not writing the right answer. Plus 4x squared minus 6x. Now we're going to subtract all of this. The first bar cancels, which is what I want. If that doesn't happen, you're doing something wrong. This is going to be negative 3x squared. The negative times a negative 6 gives me a positive 6x. Minus 11 gives me a negative 5x. And I'm going to bring that 20 down. All right, so one more time. x squared times what is negative 3x squared? Well, that's an easy one, negative 3. So we have negative 3x squared minus 6x plus 9. And now we're going to subtract all of this, which is going to switch the signs. So this is going to be positive x. Let's see, minus, excuse me, plus 11? Yes, x plus 11. All right, so let's write the integral. And you're going you're gonna to be surprised and perhaps very joyful about what the result is going to be. So we have x plus 11 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. So notice that what I have here, the last term that I wrote, is... Um, 
I kind of said that wrong in the beginning, but the degree of the of the numerator, excuse me, the denominator is greater than the numerator. All right, so in that case, that's called that's what we call a proper uh, rational function, which means that we can actually we're either going to use substitution or we're going to use the partial fraction method. Okay, so again, if the degree of the of the denominator is greater than the degree in a numerator, and then you should attempt uh, partial fractions. If it's the other way around, then try u substitution or or uh, long division. I think I might have said that backwards at the beginning. So if I did, I apologize. But I, at this point, I don't remember. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you're gonna have to use partial uh, partial fraction partial fractions on this last part that I wrote. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to have to rewrite this. So off to the side, this is kind of a, I wouldn't say a detour, but I have to do another type of method in order for me to solve this. All right. So we have, we're going to factor this. So we have X minus, excuse me, X plus three, X minus one is equal to a X plus three. So please don't write too large here because you're going to run out of room x minus 1. By the way, we still have two more problems. All right. Um, okay. So now we're going to multiply both sides of the denominator on the left side. All right. So we're going to multiply by the denominator this on the left side. Oops. I zoomed in a lot. We're going to multiply times of the denominator right there on both sides. So that's going to give me the a x plus 3 times the the denominator of the left side is going to cancel the x plus 3, so it's going to leave me with an x minus 1 here. If I do something similar on b, on b over x minus 1, that's going to leave me with b x plus 3. All right, so now uh, let's see. So if x is 1, that's going to leave me with 1 plus 12. The A term is going to cancel, and the B term is going to be 1 plus 3, which is 4. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I kind of jumped again. Hang on a second. I just realized I wrote 12 here instead of 11. I'm sorry. So this is going to be 12, and this is going to be 4B. So B is equal to 3. All right. Similarly, if x is equal to negative 3, then I would have negative 3 plus 11 is equal to the b term would cancel. The a term I would end up with a negative 3 minus 1. So this would be, hang on just a second. That would leave me with an 8 is equal to negative 4a. And so therefore, a is going to be equal to negative 2. All right, so, oh, man, I did all of that so I can rewrite this integral. Now I'm going to rewrite the whole integral, right, the one that I started with as 2x minus 3 plus negative 2 over x minus 3, excuse me, x plus 3, plus 3 over x minus 1 dx. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and integrate that. So this is going to be x squared minus 3x minus 2 natural log of the absolute value of x plus 3 plus... 3 natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 dx. Oops, excuse me, not dx plus c. All right. And that's it for that part. All right, let's go to the last two examples. I know this video is going pretty long, but, you know, this is calculus BC. All right. So sometimes you have an extra spicy little problem here. Very spicy, uh, like a problem like number nine. All right, so on this one, we're actually going to use u substitution, and then we're going to use the partial fraction decomposition, which uh, is actually not as bad as you think. Right. So first, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the denominator um, and I'm going to call, I'm going to say the U is cosine. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. All right, now I don't have a negative sign, so therefore I'm going to multiply both sides down say negative, and I'm going to end up with that. So now I'm going to rewrite this integral as, I'll put the, remember, sine of x dx, which is right here, will now be negative du. I already put the negative outside the integral. I'll leave it there. You can put it inside the integral, it really doesn't matter. And then uh, I'm gonna write this, the bottom part, cosine is u, cosine of x plus one is u plus one. All right, so that's that. Now, when you look at that, hopefully you can tell like, oh, this is a partial fraction decomposition. You may not, but with practice, I promise you, you will be able to recognize it faster. All right, so again, guys, I don't mean to lecture you about, about anything you don't care about, but the best way for you to get good at this is to do every single problem that I give you. And then, if you still think you need more practice, then I can give you a book, and I can just pick random problems, and you can just look at the answer on the back of the book. And that's honestly how I got better at this when I was when I took this class. Now I took this class in college, but when I took this class, that's the only way I could do it. All right, so we're gonna multiply both sides times the denominator of the left side. So that's gonna give me one on this side. This is gonna give me a times u plus one. And this one's gonna be b times u. All right, so now if u is equal to negative one per se, okay, so that's gonna give me one is equal to negative b, right? Notice that's u times negative one. So b is equal to negative one. All right, and now if I pick u to be zero, then b is gonna cancel and end up with u is equal to a zero plus one, which is just one, so a is one. All right, so now we're gonna rewrite this integral as the integral of one over u plus a negative one over u plus one. And now we're gonna integrate this. Now remember, with that negative on the outside, that's gonna make this a negative natural log of the absolute value of u. And that negative is also gonna make this right here a positive, right? So that's gonna give me a positive natural log of the absolute value of u plus one plus c. And then now finally, I'm gonna substitute that, nat excuse me, that u for cosine of x. All right, well, there's that. All right, so let's go over the last one. The last one was a little tough for me because I couldn't really pick what U was, but luckily you have me here, so you don't have to think anymore. Just kidding. You still have to think. So I'm going to pick U to be E to the X. Now, if that doesn't work, for the love of God, just pick the other one and figure that out. Okay, now, DU is going to be E to the X times 1 DX. Right now, when I replace all of this stuff, notice that du is e to the x dx. So I'm going to replace e to the x dx with du over. Now, I'm going to write this, right? And that was the part that took me a little bit to figure out. I'm going to write this as u squared minus 1 because if I square this and this, remember when I have a power to a power, I multiply those two. So that's going to end up being e to the 2x. All right, so I want to make you aware of what that was. But again, so that's how I got the u square on that. Okay, so u square is equal to that. That's what I'm getting at. So now, excuse me. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and factor that first. And I have to do partial fractions. So I have 1 over u plus 1, which is called a difference of squares. 
which apparently algebra two cannot ever learn sometimes. Some kids just never understand that for some reason. So we're gonna set that equal to two fractions, each fraction with one, and excuse me, I wrote up one here instead of a B. Each fraction with one of the factors of the fraction on the left. All right, so now we're gonna multiply both sides since the denominator of the left side. So that's gonna leave me with one here. That's gonna leave me with an A U minus one here. And I remember somebody complained about my parentheses looking like C, so let me be a little bit more careful. MB is equal to U minus, uh, I wrote that backwards, son of a. U minus one plus B U plus one. All right. So now same idea, if I set u is equal to one, well, that's gonna give me one is equal to b, one plus one. So one is equal to, eh, I don't like that little dot that I have there. One is equal to two b, so b is equal to one half. Okay, similarly, if u is negative one, well, I would have negative one is equal to negative, well, I mean, I get too crazy here. Negative one minus one. Remember that b stuff cancels. Hmm, I feel like I'm, what am I missing here? Oh, yeah, I accidentally wrote this as a negative one. So, yeah, so the stuff on the left should not change. That's a one, all right, so my bad. A is equal to one over negative two or negative one half, all right? So now we're gonna rewrite this as negative one half u plus one plus b, uh, shoot, positive one half over u minus one du. So that should be the easy part now. So we have negative one half natural log of the absolute value of u plus one uh, plus one half times the natural log of the absolute value of u minus one plus c. And then now we're going to replace that u with e to the x. All right, guys, so if you made it to the end of the video, congratulations. You have a lot of stamina, but trust me, this is going to be tough, right? So I'm sorry. I have to cover every example. Every example has something a little bit different. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do want to retire at some point of my amazing YouTube videos. Uh, so maybe I can teach without anybody ever being there, which is, which is the dream, to be honest. Teaching kids that are not there, I mean. Who would have thought?